good afternoon. Uh, very pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Martin Wiesbeck, uh, CEO of Ocean Quest, uh, uh, based uh, uh, at KAUST, uh, Kika Abdallah University in Science and Technology in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, a nonprofit uh, organization. This discussion is just uh, ahead of uh, very few days of the upcoming UN Ocean uh, Conference in Nice, France. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Wiesbeck is among uh, uh, basically the keynote speakers uh, uh, there and with lots of activities. First, we would like to know more about uh, Ocean Quest and what inspired you uh, to establish that. Uh, we know about uh, uh, the background. Uh, we would like to know more about the background and the stakeholders involved. Yes, uh, thank you very much. So I'm very happy to announce Ocean Quest to the world. Uh, we will be at the UN Ocean Conference number three in Nice to officially launch it with a high level VIP event. But in a nutshell, Ocean Quest is there to unveil the wonders of the deep ocean. So Ocean Quest is looking into the deep ocean. I sometimes call it the dark ocean, everything mm -hmm. below 200 meters. And what we are trying to advance regionally and same almost globally is to exploring the ocean secrets for the benefit of humanity. That is a little bit of a mouthful, but what it really means we want to accelerate ocean discovery by using robots, uh, research vessels, advanced technology. We also want to advance the technology that allows us to explore the deep ocean by using new sensors and even digital opportunities like digital twins. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, the planet is very big. 70% is ocean, uh, almost 60% is deep ocean. And we can only do that by working together. So we're in our foundation supporting global cooperation with many other countries. In particular, also with a focus to those regions who don't have the technical capabilities to access the deep sea, even in their own area. And last but not least, uh, Sagrafa, we are very much interested to exciting the public for the deep ocean and let them understand that the deep ocean is not dark and scary, but it's exciting, new, innovative, and holds some of the keys to our joint future. Yeah. Would you please tell us more about your agenda? It will be a very busy week in, in Nice. Would you please tell us more about the agenda, basically, your your meetings, uh, your events, uh, your, your any initiatives, any announcements that you, uh, you are planning uh, to have over there among all the different stakeholders? Yes. So first and foremost, we're announcing to the ocean community in a very public way the arrival of Ocean Quest as a foundation. As mm -hmm. you know, this has been in the works for the last three years in the kingdom, but yes. now we're finally public in there. So we're basically offering to the ocean community, here's a new resource, here's a new asset, here's new capabilities to engage with the global ocean, deep ocean science community uh, with us. Second, uh, together with some of our key partners, that is OceanX, Embari, Woodsol, Scripps, mm -hmm. Uh, we are launching a pavilion in what's called the Berlin. That's the short word for a whale. So it's part yes. of the green zone, open sure. to the public. And there will be a pavilion focusing on the deep sea, focusing exactly on our agenda. So I'm very proud for that because that pavilion will be open to the public for three weeks. And then personally, we're engaging on a number of conversations and workshops on a particular aspect that is our scientific focus is sea mounts. These are mm -hmm. undersea volcanoes, which are very rich in biodiversity, full of unknown things, maybe have some solutions for curing diseases. And we're launching with our partners an international science program focusing on seamounts. It's the first baby steps at UNOC. We want to solidify that activity and bring it for endorsement to the scientific community by the end of this calendar year. Yeah, uh, so you're basically introducing uh, your organization from Saudi Arabia to the world and opening the door for uh, very wide uh, global collaboration. Absolutely. And the way uh, we are doing that is in two ways. First, uh, we're signing even some strategic MOUs with some of our partner organizations. These are global organizations of all kinds. But we're also talking to and presenting the results of our first expedition. We mm. went to sea starting at the end of January in what we call the Around Africa expedition mm -hmm. that we executed together with Ocean X, our sister organization. And we visited uh, five African ports and did two major scientific legs, all of them led by African scientists. Mm -hmm. So this expedition was very amazing. We had more than 50 participants from around the world. Yeah. 
We had in particular 27 yeah. early career ocean professionals. Yeah. So it's yeah. these type of results that we're bringing to the United Nations Ocean Conference. So you're revealing, you're revealing the outcomes. Well, the absolutely. So of, we're, of the we're delivering in Africa. Exactly. We're delivering already on the expectations of any UN effort that is leaving nobody behind. In this area of marine science, deep ocean in particular, a lot of the world is left behind because you need high tech and assets that are not so available around the planet. And Ocean Quest is trying to level the playing field in that sense by em empowering early career ocean professionals, by working with nations who don't have that capabilities and allowing them to share the results, but also jointly discover what's there in their waters or international waters next to their continent, next to their country. And that is such an amazing mission. I know it's going to be highly appreciated at the UN level because we're doing exactly what the UN is for, international collaboration, level playing field, sharing the knowledge and the data for the benefit of all. Yeah, uh, so that's the basically the findings uh, of your uh, very successful mission that you, you had uh, uh, across Africa. Uh, what about the future missions that you are planning to have? Can you yeah. reveal any for us? I absolutely can. So uh, our uh, governing board, uh, so we, we call it the Board of Trustees for the Ocean Quest Foundation, uh, has accepted uh, our midterm expedition strategy. So what our mixed term expedition says in a nutshell, we will do an expedition in the Red Sea. It's an obviously an amazing sea right in front of Saudi Arabia absolutely. every year for something like uh, 30 days, 60 days, depending on details and availability of vessels, which is a complication right now. But mm -hmm. on top of that, we're going to go back to uh, the Seamount area south of Madagascar, working with our mm -hmm. South African colleagues on what we call as a shared expedition. Mm -hmm. So we'll be using the Angelus 2. It's an icebreaker that is owned and operated by South Africa. Mm -hmm. But even before that, uh, next year, early next year, we're going to go to Brazil and the Victoria Trinidad uh, Seamount Ridge off Brazil and be mm -hmm. using the Vital, that's a research vessel from Brazil, and again, a shared expedition between Ocean Crest and the Brazilians. Uh, so that will happen next year. The year after that, we're going to do a second expedition in Brazil, that's in 2027. And in 2028, we're going to focus on Cabo Verde Seamount system. So we have, for the next few years, you know, rough plans Excellent. for how our yeah. expeditions are going to go. And you can see it's the Atlantic, it's the Indian Ocean, it's the Red Sea, and possibly also some shared expedition in the Mediterranean. And uh, and again, again, it's all deep ocean we're talking. Yes, so we are talking about the deep ocean, so everything below 200 meters and specifically focus on seamount systems because these seamount systems are highly biodiverse. They're very rich in ecological species. They're poorly mm -hmm. understood. They're probably mm -hmm. the birth grounds for many communities in the ocean. And in some ways, it's a good idea for us to focus there because it's not as vast as the deep ocean in general but they are of high impact. And one of the areas the CMOS are really relevant, we're just at the UN level agreeing to what's called in technical terms BBNJ. So it's the Biodiversity Protection in International Waters. And it's very likely that 80% of these protection areas will be seamount systems. So our foundation will support the international community to provide some baseline data and information about seamounts to assess which of these seamount systems are worthy of protection and how mm -hmm. one should go about that. Excellent. And, uh, uh, you know, you are an organization uh, based in Saudi Arabia to the world, right? So, and we're talking here a lot about uh, uh, technology and all the progress and the role of technology uh, in developing your mission. And uh, we know that within uh, Vision uh, 2030, uh, we are talking a lot about uh, empowerment, uh, knowledge skill, and about uh, knowledge transfer. So, empowerment, empowering the local talent and also the cross-border uh, knowledge transfer. How are you uh, adopting uh, uh, those fundamentals uh, at Ocean Quest? So Ocean Quest is strongly supporting the 2030 vision of the kingdom and in three ways. On the one hand, uh, we are R&D, so research, development, innovation, which is one strong pillar of the vision 2030 for the kingdom. But more importantly, we are encouraging Saudis to engage in this particular field of science, that is natural science around the ocean, 
and as much as the science, but also innovation and technology. And by doing it in an international setting allows also the Saudi population to see that careers in this area not only are exciting for its own right, but also allow you to internationally cooperate, collaborate, learn from each other, share the knowledge. So in that sense, uh, that's the second part. And the third part is our innovation ambition. Now, Saudi Arabia has a lot of digital opportunities already. They're very good in gaming and AI. So one of the areas building digital twins of Seamount system will will fall very well and be well well placed in Saudi Arabia with its existing ecosystem on information technology, ambition on AI, server farms, and also a lot of informatics students. But we're bringing that together with the environmental ambition, because remember Saudi Arabia has a strong commitment to 30% protection of the diversity in its own EEZ, a lot of activity in warm corals on the Red Sea, but also the ecosystem in the, in the Gulf region. So we are promoting that and extending that to the deep ocean. So there's warm water corals, which are well known to most people, but there's also cold water corals in the seamount system that we're going to focus at. So it's really fully endorsing the Vision 2030, supporting it by educating more Saudis in STEM technology, bringing the ocean thinking to Saudi, looking at job and blue growth opportunities in the kingdom, and doing all of that in partnership mode for the kingdom, the close by regions, but also the world. Yeah, uh, so in terms of implementing uh, those points that you mentioned about, can you tell us please uh, more about it in terms of uh, uh, what is the roadmap uh, to to attract uh, uh, the local uh, Saudi talent, including females, and uh, uh, any agreement or MOU uh, for the knowledge sharing and the knowledge transfer for cross-border? Yes. So we are working right now. Remember, these are early stages. We are, you know, in month three of the organization. So we're working on some of the international partnerships with other research organizations, with MTS, that's the Marine Technology Society. We do an MOU. Mm -hmm. We're doing an. Uh, an oh, sorry, which, with which one, if you don't mind? Uh, MTS, that's the Marine yes. Technology Society. That's a globally operating network of marine technologists. Yes. We have a close understanding with the Intergovernmental Oceanographic. Uh, uh, committee of the UNESCO and the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, IOC, supports ocean science, supports global observation, and has a subgroup focusing on the deep ocean observing strategy. We're working with them. So you can see we're working right now a little bit on the international side, but at the same time, uh, we are working with the kingdom, with all the marine actors to bring them together and see how collectively we can advance access to the sea by sharing vessels, technology, innovation, and by also empowering the Saudi let's say, ambition and existing activities in the blue economy. Now, there's a number of MOUs that we have in at work with NCW, the National Center for Wildlife, the SHAMS is responsible for corals and sea turtles. We're working with also developers like around Red Sea Global, and there's many other actors that we're doing the work with right now. And the idea is to develop a roadmap, Sir uh, Al-Jaffa, that the roadmap will show how Saudi Arabia over the next five years can call and bring together its already accomplishments on deep sea science and really showing what we have to build upon how with strategic partnership we can be even stronger. Great. So when we, of course, uh, the uh, Saudi economy is buzzing, and uh, when we are talking about the uh, Vision 2030 and developing and diversifying uh, uh, the different sectors, including uh, the blue economy that you mentioned, uh, uh, how are you going uh, basically to attract and make uh, your foundation and all the activities uh, that you are doing more attractive uh, for the business community? So that's a very important point. I mean, obviously, uh, our key stakeholders will probably be those who are interested in deep ocean science and discovery. So that is probably more of the technologists, the researchers, the innovation uh, ecosystem. But that has very strong linkages to the private sector. So for the private sector, we're looking at business opportunities in three areas. For and foremost is the technology that we need to understand and sense the deep ocean. So there's a whole ecosystem globally and a little bit in Saudi as well there. And here we're encouraging Saudi actors to do partnerships with international corporations to, let's say, become the local hub for a global operating marine technology company. So that's on the tech enabling side. Yeah. 
The second area is about knowledge sharing. Uh, it's about digital twinning, sharing of visuals, sharing of digital environments of the deep sea. So we see there's a, an enormous economy out there in the entertainment business and the gaming business and the knowledge sharing business and the also filming and feature film business. So that we're working with in Saudi is an interesting place to be because there's a lot of ambition there, including at Neom, there's supposed to be an experience center looking at the deep sea that we're gonna partner with. So that whole, let's say, entertainment, education, data, visualization, digital twinning ecosystem. And last but not least, we're also looking into other commercial areas, which are non-oil and gas and non-deep sea mining, for example, on bioprospecting. So there are substances for deep organisms which are known to hold potential keys for transplant, for occurring of, uh, let's say, cancer, rare diseases, but also some of the chemical processes and pharmaceutical processes have some uh, clues to be gained from deep sea organisms. So we're working with some of the global companies that do that, and we're also exploring which of that resort, uh, research is ripe uh, to establish here in the region and the kingdom. Yeah, so you think you anticipate that the blue economy will have a big boost uh, through Ocean Quest and all the activities that you are planning to have in the coming three to five years? We see ourselves as an enabler. We're not uh, the f investor of the blue economy. We're the not the main customers, enable. but we're a catalyst. We're bringing science, we're bringing innovation, we're bringing global networks, we're bringing that thinking to the country as a catalyst. So don't think of Ocean Quest as the main investor. There will be others, but we're really trying to really highlight the opportunities in that space and trying to be the catalyst and doing a networking because none of these sectors can be done locally. They're all internationally networked organization, at least those who are successful. But again, bringing Saudi Arabia to the discussion and making it a hub in some areas, maybe even the global hub for some of these activities would be amazing. Uh, any other point or that you would like to reveal for us ahead of Nice? I think one of the areas that we're really most uh, proud of is our engagement of youth and early career ocean professionals across the planet. The very fact that we were able to attract um, order on the order of 40 early career ocean professionals on our first expedition. And so yeah, let me just tell you, we had an opening to join the expedition advertised in November 1 last year. By December 15, we had 160 applications from 30 countries from around the world who wanted to join the expedition. So it was very hard to reduce it down to a smaller number, like 35, 38 early career of professionals who could join us. But those who did join, it was the first time ever for them to be on a world-class uh, research vessel. It was the first time ever for them to see firsthand what the deep ocean looked like. And the Ocean Explorer, we also had the opportunity to put them diving in a submersible. And our colleagues from Madagascar are sure they're going to win the President's Medal for being the first Madagascar who actually went below the ocean down to 500 meters to explore the deep sea. These kind of accomplishments, these kind of career rewards and opening new thinking for their futures is extremely rewarding. It's something we are already very proud of at Ocean Quest to being supporting that community. Uh, Dr. Visbeck, uh, thank you very much for being with us today ahead of the UN Ocean uh, Conference in Nice and look forward uh, to meeting you uh, in Nice uh, among uh, uh, the, uh, the team and uh, to covering all your activities uh, in Nice and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to that. Thank you.